I'm going to start this video off by installing Terraform with Chocolatey. If you don't already have Chocolatey installed, I'm going to give you a quick rundown. If you already have Chocolatey installed, just skip ahead about 30 seconds. So if you don't already have Chocolatey installed, you just go to chocolatey.org slash install. You can find it on Google. And you just scroll down and you can install the individual version of Chocolatey by going to going through these step-by-step -step things. First thing you're going to want to do is type in PowerShell and hold down shift when you right click so you can run it as administrator. Go ahead and copy this to the clipboard and paste it into here. I'm actually not going to hit it though because I've already got it installed. To verify that you have it installed, you can just type in Choco and it shows you the version of Chocolatey that you are currently running now. Now that we have Chocolatey installed, let's go back to the Terraform community form of Chocolatey. In order to install Terraform, all we have to do is type in Choco install Terraform. I'm going to hit yes, A, to A for yes to all, and the install of Terraform was successful. Looks good. And we could just verify this installation by typing in terraform-v, which will show us the Terraform version. And my antivirus is just checking out Terraform, and it looks good. The next thing we're going to want to do is go back to the Terraform Chocolatey form and go under Upgrade. We're going to use this Choco Upgrade Terraform to just make sure that it's fully up to date. And we can do Terraform version again. You can see that the version is unchanged because we just did a fresh install anyways. So looks like we're gonna have to do a system reboot soon. For this example, we're gonna wanna set up an AWS account and that'll be for aws.amazon.com. We can go to the top right hand corner to create a free AWS account. In this step of the sign-up stage for AWS, it'll ask you for some billing information, but don't worry, it won't charge you for anything unless if you set up anything that is worth charging in the website, and you will be notified for something like that. So don't worry, this video will be free. We're going to go with the basic support, which is free, and we're off to the AWS Management Console. The next thing we're going to do is go under your PC, your C drive, and create a folder called Projects. Under here, we're going to go new and type in Terraform. So let's go ahead and navigate to this folder in our PowerShell. So we go CD, and here we are. If we do an LS, we can see there's no files here. And in this folder, we're going to have some Visual Studio Code files. So if you don't already have Visual Studio Code installed, I'll drop a link in the description below to one of my videos that walks you through how to set that up. And that is this one, the Python lab setup. It actually shows you how to install Visual Studio Code as well. So just go to that video if you're having any issues. We're going to go under File and click Open Folder and navigate to our Projects Terraform. I'm going to trust the authors. And in this folder, I'm going to type in a file called main.tf. And TF stands for Terraform. And right away, you can see the little logo pop up. And in order for this to work though properly, we got to go under the extensions and type in Terraform. And there's the official plugin, which is by HashiCorp itself, with a little star and it's verified. And this is the one that we want to install. So now that we've got Terraform installed, we've got AWS set up, and we've got the plugin extension set up in the Visual Studio Code. We can then check out our location here at the top. I'm in North Virginia, so my little code is US East 1. Take note of this because we're going to go into our main Terraform file and type in provider AWS. The region is, what was it? US East 1. And my access key is, we'll leave this blank for now. Then we'll go Put in a secret key. The secret key should not ever be hard coded in a production environment. We're going to do a hard coded one right now just to get started. It's important to know that these configuration files are going to be hosted in version control systems like Git repositories. So these are going to be shared around and the infrastructure of code, you don't want to have your keys just sitting around there for anyone to look at. So what we're going to put in here is the access key and the secret key of the AWS user that's going to be accessing this provider. So in order to do that, we have to go over to our AWS. So we're going to need to create a user. We'll go to the IAM dashboard and you can just go type in IAM and users is an IAM feature. So we can just hit users. We can create add user to create a new user. And I'm going to be creating an admin right now. And we're going to want an access key and a password for the 
custom password, I'm just going to do 123 at QWE, exclamation mark. And we'll even just do that capitals just, just for the hell of it. So super extremely secure password, as you all know. But And I'm going to uncheck the user must create new password next sign-in because this is just a lab environment. Let's hit next. So if we already had groups installed or set up, I mean, and configured, we could add this user to specific groups depending on what we wanted to do. We can copy permissions from other users. So if we want to like clone users, let's say we have an engineer coming in that is the same as Brad from the engineering department, then we can just clone his permissions onto the new user. We can attach existing policies directly. So this is a huge list, 733 items of permissions of templates, like pre-made permissions that you can set up and use for the users that you create. And as you can see, each one of these items has a little drop down menu, which shows you summary of all of the policies. And you can see the summary in either a list format, or you can see it in JSON format. We're going to select the administrator access policy to give us the admin access because our name is admin right so we gotta make it an admin so next we're gonna go to tags tags is a great way to manage things so as we were talking about earlier brad he's in the engineering department and he works with let's say kubernetes and terraform and ansible we can put in those tags to make sure that whenever you go to search and you look up that tag ansible then everything associated with ansible is going to come up including brad Next, we're going to go to review. Review just to make sure that we're understanding all the options that we pick. One last final chance to check our configuration to make sure there's no mistakes before we create the user. And here is our user. We can download the CSV file, which I'm going to do right now. And this essentially creates an Excel file. The Excel file shows the admin, the access key ID, the secret access key, and the console login link. You can also find this here in the users section by going to IAM users and clicking on the administrator or the user that we want to select. And I believe it's under security credentials. And here is our access key. We're going to take this CSV file, grab this access ID key and plug it into here. Then we're going to take this secret access key and plug it into the secret key string. So now let me show you where I got this information from of how I know what to type into here in Visual Studio Code. So Terraform has a website, registry.terraform.io. I'm going to put this link in the description below, so don't worry. And here is a list of all of the providers that you can use with Terraform. So we're using AWS. So if I click AWS, there's a bunch of information of all the modules and features that you can use. And if you go under the documentation tab here, we can see here's some example usage. And this is the one that I'm using right now. And if we scroll down here, we got authentication and configuration. So right here is the usage that we're using with um, the provider AWS. We put in the region, the access key, and the secret key. But now we still have to hook up Terraform to AWS. So how are we going to do this? We can do that by going into PowerShell and going to the directory where we are. So we could do PWD, print working directory, which shows that we are in projects Terraform, which is the same one that our main.terraform configuration file is inside of. And so with this main.terraform file, we can do a Terraform initialize. And this initializes our current working directory and installs the providers that are defined in our Terraform configuration file, and that provider is AWS. And it looks like nothing was added to this. And if I can take a guess, if I open this up, I can see that there's nothing inside of this file. So I think I just haven't saved this file yet. So let me go ahead and save it first. Now let's rerun the Terraform in it, and that looks better. Now it's actually added a couple things. If we go back to the folder, we can see that there's now a terraform.lockhcl, and inside of here, it's created providers, HashiCorp, AWS, and we've got this executable file that's a Terraform provider, AWS. And we can see that in here too, there's the exe. So now we've got Terraform installed completely. It's hooked up to our AWS account. So now we can start doing some labs with AWS and Terraform. So now that we're all set up, let's hop on over to the next video where we can start doing our first lab.